All right, hey traders, welcome back. In this lesson, I want to show you guys how to create a correlation meter using arrays. So what you see on your chart right now, or on my chart right now, is a correlation meter I created using arrays. And what we have here is a bunch of numbers. Let me change my pen color. A bunch of numbers and a bunch of data drawing on to my chart. Let me open up the settings menu real quick to begin with. So the first thing we have is a look back period. This is for our array. So by default, we are creating a 20 length array with a price source of the closing price. And our reference market is silver. So XAG USD is silver. And I'm currently on the XAU USD chart or the gold chart. And so what my uh, indicator here is showing is the correlation between gold and silver. And by correlation, I mean directional correlation. So this purple area in the background is the covariance of these two markets. Now, full disclaimer, I'm not very adept with mathematics. <laughs> I got all of this information off of Google. There'll be a link below this video to the um, theory behind correlation and the mathematics behind it. Uh, but this is just an example of how you can use arrays in PineScript to create a useful tool. So in this case, we are displaying the correlation between gold and silver. The red bars you see here is the percentage gain or loss on silver. And the blue bars you see here is the percentage gain or loss on my current market, or in this case, gold. So if I hover over this big green bar here, it says plus 8.58. And so does my blue number down here. 8.581. So the blue number is our percentage gain or loss for the currently loaded market. The red bars is the percentage gain or loss for the reference market. The purple number is our covariance. And the gray number you see here is our correlation strength. And the closer this is to one, the more positively correlated these markets are, which means that when one is moving up, the other one is likely to be as well. So you can see that gold right now has a correlation of 0.868. And around this period here, it got as high as 0.9. So if this were to hit one, that would mean that both price movements are identical on both markets. When one goes up, the other goes up as well. So I chose gold and silver to begin this demonstration on because they are highly correlated markets. So it's a very, very obvious example of high correlation between two markets. The more that this gray number or this gray line might be hard to see, but this gray number here, the more that that stays positive above zero, the more positively correlated these markets are. If we had a negative number here, um, closer to negative one, that would mean that the markets are negatively correlated, which means that when one goes up, the other one goes down. So for example, we're on gold right now. Let's have a look at a different reference market. Let's try the dollar, US dollar index. Click OK. Now you can see that we have a highly negative correlation. So the US dollar is highly negatively correlated to gold. So when gold's value goes up, that usually means the US dollar's value is going down. Let's have a look at Bitcoin. Let's see what Bitcoin's correlation is to gold. Click OK. And it's actually not that correlated at the moment, at least. Uh, we are closer to zero, which is very interesting. That means that at least on this weekly chart, gold and Bitcoin are not necessarily following each other in their directional moves. So let's open up the source code to the script and break down what's happening here. So the first thing I'm doing is getting some user inputs and we're just getting our look back period, our price source and our reference market from the user. The next thing we do is get the percentage change of our reference data source. So that's this market here or whatever we select uh, in this setting. And to get that information, we just use the security function. We pass in our reference market, the current time frame dot period, which is whatever time frame we've loaded onto our chart. We want to compare the same time frame that we have on our chart to our reference market. And then we pass in our source. So by default, it's just the closing price. Now notice I didn't bother with our repaint code here where I check uh, bar state dot is real time question mark. And then I reference the previous bar and all of that. I didn't bother with this indicator because we are referencing such a long look back. It really doesn't matter if this indicator repaints, but you could add that code in if you want to. The next thing I do here is calculate the reference markets change percentage. 
So this is the percentage gain or loss on our reference market in percentage terms. To get that value, we just do a little bit of percentage math here. We subtract our reference data value, in this case, our reference market's closing price from its previous closing price, and then divide that value by its previous closing price, multiply that by 100, and we get the percentage gain or loss on our reference market in percentage terms. The next thing we do is the exact same thing for our current market. So we get our current data loss, in this case, the closing price by default, and then we do the exact same math on our current market. So the price action we see on our chart right now, uh, if I hover over this real-time bar, we're at 0 0.37, and so is our blue number here, which is our current change variable. So once we have our percentage gain and loss for both markets, the next thing we do is declare some arrays. We have two arrays here. We have our reference array and our current array. The reference array is set to a new float array with the size of our look back period. So 20 by default, 20 values in our array. We create an array for our current market as well. And now because we only have a 20 period look back and we have way more than 20 bars on our chart, the next thing I do is shift the last value from our arrays so that we have a first in, first out approach. So as we keep adding values into our array, once we hit our limit, we remove the oldest value from our array. And it's like a snake eating its own tail. We just keep deleting old values and replacing them with new values. If we don't do this, then we'll just end up with the first 20 bars on our chart loaded into our arrays, and that will be the only data we reference. So it's important to shift that data out of the array because we only want 20 values, 20 elements in our array at any one time. So whenever we add or push a new value, we need to first shift the first entered value out of our array. So once we shift or remove the oldest value from our array, we add the newest value to our array. To do that, we use the array push function, we put in our array name or variable ID, so reference array and current array. Remember reference is our reference market, current is our current market. And then we pass into or push into these arrays the change percentage. So, so that's our red and blue numbers, the percentage gain or loss in price on the current bar that the script is running on. Once we have this data, we have our 20 values of whatever price source we've selected here across whichever markets we have loaded and we've selected here. Then we calculate our covariance. To calculate our covariance, we use the array.covariance function. And this function all of the math for us. Once we have our covariance, we plot that onto the chart using a style area or a plot.style area, which is this purple area in the background. And we title it covariance. And that gives us an idea of how correlated the market is at the moment. It's sort of an indication of the, the momentum of the current correlation. So here you can see that we have quite a bit of purple plotting throughout March, May, and June of 2020. So let's load up BLX really quickly and have a look at that same period. Here we go. March, March, April, May, and June. Price was moving up on Bitcoin. If we go back to gold, you can see the price was moving up as well. So that's why we have such a high positive covariance happening here. But anyway, once we've plotted our covariance onto the chart, we then plot our reference data. And to do this, I use the histogram and columns. So our reference market is red columns with 25% transparency. And our current market that we have currently loaded onto our chart is blue histograms. So they're slightly thinner than our uh, big red bars. That way we can compare the uh, two values to each other a little easier. Once we've plotted our reference data, the final thing we do here is to determine the standard deviation of our arrays. And then once we have that data, we can calculate the correlation between these two markets. So first we calculate our reference markets standard deviation using the array.stdev function. And then we pass in our reference array then we do the same for our current markets standard deviation. We use the array.standarddeviation 
pass in our current array. Once we have that information, we can calculate our correlation between these two markets by dividing our covariance value, this purple number, by our reference standard deviation multiplied by our current standard deviation. And then we plot this value onto our chart in gray with a line width of two as a step line. So for example, let's maximize this uh, indicator and zoom right in a bit here. You can see that our gray line is actually stepped. So it basically draws a horizontal line across that whole bar instead of a smooth like this. So we can actually see the exact correlation. And sorry if your eyes are stinging right now, mine are actually <laughs> physically stinging looking at these colors, it's terrible. Um, I had this color scheme set up for a white background chart and I haven't adapted it for a black chart. My apologies for that, I didn't have time today to bother with that. Uh, maybe that's something you can do if you want to uh, play around with this script code. Of course, the source code will be below. Um, this looks like a rave party right now. But anyway, that's basically our correlation script. And we are achieving this using the inbuilt array calculation variables. So if I create some white space here, and we type array dot control space, you can get the average value of your arrays. You can get the covariance, obviously. Um, we can get the standard deviation, the maximum value, the median value, the minimum value, the mode. Um, there's a lot of different mathematical calculations we can perform on our arrays using inbuilt functions. You can get the sum of your arrays, the variance, etc. So for now, this is just a quick practical example lesson on how I created a correlation meter to measure how two markets perform against each other. So there are many ways you could use this particular type of tool in your trading. One way I would use this, for example, is let's say I'm trading Euro Yen on the Forex markets and I get a setup on Aussie Yen as well. Let's say we're on the daily chart here. As you can see by our gray line here, these two markets have a fairly high correlation. Now it's not quite as high as gold and silver, but it does get up there at times. Like through this whole period, we were pretty close to 90% correlation, 0.9 correlation. What that means is, let's say that I get a short trading setup in this downtrend and I wanna be aggressive with it. I want to risk 2% of my account on that trade. And then I also get a very high quality short setup on Aussie Yen on that same day and I want to take both trades. If I risk 2% on both trades and the correlation between these two markets is very high, what that means is that there is a high chance that these two trades will have the same outcome, depending obviously on the time frame I'm trading, the uh, profit target I have. But let's assume that I'm trading the same time frame with the same profit target distance in ATR. If I put 2% risk on both of those trades, there is a good chance if one trade gets stopped out, so will the other trade. And so even though I wanted to risk 2% on the trade, I'm actually technically risking 4% of risk. So by creating a tool like this in PineScript, that can be one way to employ filters in your strategy to make sure that when two markets are highly correlated um, and a situation like that arises, perhaps instead of risking 2%, on both trades, maybe I only risk 1% on each trade. And that way, if they both lose, I still just lose my original 2% risk. But by splitting my risk across two highly correlated markets, I put myself in a position where maybe one loses and maybe the other wins, or maybe they both win. But if they do both lose, I don't lose double my risk. But in any case, that will do it for today's video. As I mentioned earlier, the source code for this script will be below if you want to play around with this and I will speak with you in the next lesson. Take care.